Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to speak about the evidence for energy levels and sublevels by ionization energy. Let's get started. As we can see here in this graph, we have the first ionization energies for period three elements, starting from Na to Ar. We can see in this graph three things. The general trend, which is reflecting that the ionization energy is increasing from left to right across the period. Number two, there is a slight decrease in the ionization energy from Mg to Al. Another slight decrease in ionization energy from P to S. We can justify this uh, uh, general trend by speaking about the nuclear charge which is the effect of the positively charged nucleus on the last shell electrons. As the nuclear charge increase, the first ionization energy increase because the valence electrons are strongly attracted by the nucleus. More protons, so more attraction, more attraction between the positively charged nucleus and the last shell electrons which we can call them valence electrons. What about the uh, second point? First of all, we have to uh, check the electronic configuration. As you can see here, we have the condensed electronic configuration and the orbital diagram for the uh, only 3s and 3p. We can see that when you are moving from mg to al, from Mg to Al. If we would like to remove an electron from the last shell, from Al, you are removing an electron from 3P, which is further away from the nucleus than 3S, than 3S. So, it's much easier to remove an electron from 3P than 3S in case of Mg. And this is the reason behind the slight decrease in the ionization energy for Al than Mg. Again, why is that? Because it is easier, it requires less energy to remove an electron from 3p, which is further away from the nucleus, than 3s. The third point is about uh, phosphorus and sulfur. The main difference between them, we have to look at the orbital diagram, we can see that we have in, in, in sulfur, we have two electrons in the same orbital. Okay, we already know that electrons are negatively charged. When we have two electrons in the same orbital, so it means that there is a repulsion between them. And if we compare that with phosphorus, we don't have any two electrons in the same orbital, which means that is more stable. The 3p here is much more stable than the 3p in case of sulfur, which means that when two electrons are in the same p orbital, they repel each other more strongly. Hence, an electron is easier to be removed when they are repelling each other in case of sulfur. And this is the reason behind the slight decrease in the ionization uh, energy from phosphorus to sulfur. Based on that, we can see that this graph is reflecting the sublevels. How is that? We have here Na, the last subshell is 3s and it has only one electron. Then Mg still 3s to electrons, which means that it's harder to remove an electron from Mg because it has a higher nuclear charge, stronger attraction between the nucleus and the last shell electrons. Then there is a slight decrease as we go from Mg to Al because we have for Al we have 3p1. So 3p is further away from the nucleus. So it's easier to remove an electron from 3p than 3s. 3s is closer to the nucleus. 
3p is further away from the nucleus, so it's easier to remove an electron from 3p than 3s. Then, as we go to silicon and phosphorus, we have 3p2, 3p3. Then there is another slight decrease in the ionization energy because we started to put two electrons in the same orbital. We have here 3p. We have one for Al, another electron for Si, then P, we have three electrons. This is stable now because each electron occupies an orbital. But starting from, starting from S, starting from S, we have two electrons, the same orbital, which means that there is a repulsion here. So it requires less energy to remove an electron from S because electrons are already repelling each other, so they prefer to be separate. Then as we go the, to uh, Cl, we have 3p5, then Al 3p6. And as you can see here, this trend is already reflecting the sub shells for the elements in period 3.